The Aqualus proximal humeral nail and instrumentation have been designed for angular stable minimally invasive reduction and internal fixation of proximal humerus fractures. Unique features of the nail include that it is straight, of small diameter, and that it is cannulated. The philosophy of the nail is to provide stability of the fracture by specific placement of the proximal screws into the tuberosities, not the humeral head. Proximal screws lock into the nail via a polyethylene sleeve that provides rigid fixation of the screws to the nail, providing an angular stable proximal construct. There are both static and dynamic distal interlocking options that are 20 degrees divergent to provide stable centering of the nail in cases where the proximal intramedullary canal is large. The stability of the fracture construct with this nail and lock screws is demonstrated in this video. A two-part proximal humerus fracture with poor cancellous bone is simulated by fixing a small orange to the saw bone's humeral shaft. As the video shows, it is impossible to pull the orange off of the humeral shaft. Pulling off the orange peel shows that there is minimal fixation required in the humeral head portion of the orange to provide adequate fixation. The nail is straight to respect the anatomic axis of the proximal humerus. This facilitates making the entry point near the apex of the humeral head, which allows for anatomic fixation while entering the rotator cuff through the muscular tissue of the cuff instead of the rotator cuff tendon. This approach has been shown to minimize the problem of postoperative pain after proximal humeral nailing since the tendon itself is not violated. The tuberosity based fixation is demonstrated on this cadaveric radiograph slide which shows the wide divergence of the first three proximal screws to provide optimal tuberosity fixation. The screws can be left short or long depending on the overall stability of the fracture pattern and fixation construct. A fourth proximal screw can be placed for lateral tuberosity fragments and can also be made long for inferior calcar support. This animation demonstrates the philosophy of the Tournier Aqualis proximal humeral nail. The four-part fracture is reduced near anatomically. The nail is placed through the superior portion of the humeral head. Once at the appropriate depth, greater and lesser tuberosity screws are placed, fixing and compressing the tuberosity fragments to the nail, humeral head, and to each other. An inferior calcar support, fourth screw, can be placed if desired. At least one static or dynamic distal screw are placed, according to the discretion of the surgeon, to stabilize the humeral shaft to the proximal segment. This short video will demonstrate a case of open reduction internal fixation of a four-part proximal humerus fracture using the Aqualis proximal humeral nail. The patient is a 50-year-old gentleman, left-hand dominant, who was thrown off of his motorcycle in a high-speed accident. He had an ipsilateral talus fracture that was treated elsewhere. He presented with a closed injury to his left shoulder with significant swelling. His preoperative Gracie true AP view of the shoulder demonstrates an inferiorly displaced and impacted humeral head fragment and a displaced greater tuberosity fragment which is locked above the humeral head. The axillary view reveals that the lesser tuberosity is also fractured but is in close proximity to the greater tuberosity fragment making the likelihood high that the rotator cuff is intact. The humeral head is not dislocated or subluxed on this view. The surgery is performed in the modified beach chair position, with shoulder draped free and the shoulder support removed to provide radiolucency. The C-arm is brought in from the opposite side of the table. True AP and scapular Y radiographs can be obtained with this setup to ensure adequate reduction and placement of fixation in orthogonal planes. And the arm holder is going to keep the arm in a more or less neutral rotation throughout the procedure. So neutral, we're going to extend them a little bit, like this. And then a little bit of extension facilitates putting the nail in. So the key, the key is to keep it in neutral rotation and a little bit of extension. A true AP x-ray is first obtained with traction to visualize the behavior of the humeral head. In this case, the humeral calcar reduced near anatomically, indicating that the medial periosteal hinge of capsule and soft tissue is likely to be intact. This also improves the prognosis regarding vascular supply to the humeral head. The humeral head is still in valgus, however, with the superiorly displaced greater tuberosity. This is what has to be reduced before fixing the fracture with the nail. So we're just marking our uh, bony landmarks, and that's key for a fracture, so you know where you're at. 
Okay, and there's the coracoid processes right up here. Okay, so we're going to make a transverse incision off the edge of the acromion. Kind of like that. And we can extend that to a deltopectoral approach if we have to. So we'll make it kind of long down like this in case we have to extend it or this way. So we're going to raise skin flaps here. So we are going to make a longitudinal split. So we're chromium right there. We're going to release the deltoid fibers off. There's good soft tissue here. So we're going to just excise a little bit of the bursa to get visualization. And our first goal is to find the greater tuberosity. So now I've found the fracture site right here. This is the greater tuberosity right here. The greater tuberosity can now be visualized, displaced above the humeral head. A number five ethabon suture is placed into the supraspinatus insertion to provide traction. A cob elevator is then used to lift the humeral head out of valgus. After the superior humeral head is elevated, the greater tuberosity is pulled lateral to the head and pressed behind it, usually locking both the tuberosity and humeral head in near anatomic position. At this point, the reduction is checked fluoroscopically. So the rotator cuff I want you to, to see is completely intact. There's no tears in the rotator cuff, nothing. So the key is to get the head reduced in the near anatomic position and pushing the tuberosities underneath it to support it. Once the adequacy of the reduction is confirmed, a guide pin is placed through a small longitudinal incision made through the superior muscular fibers of the rotator cuff, medial to the cuff insertion. Alternatively, the guide pin can be placed directly through these muscle fibers, akin to placing an arthroscopy portal through the rotator cuff musculature. An awl or arthroscopic 9mm reamer can be used to make the pilot hole for the nail in the humeral head. The nail is then inserted. In this case, the greater tuberosity guide wire had to be repositioned and cut to facilitate placement of the nail and improve the reduction of the greater tuberosity. The pin can be placed through the jig to localize the top of the nail to help determine depth of nail insertion. An additional helpful marker of nail insertional depth is the small notch that is visible on the guide. If this notch is slightly proud by one to two millimeters, or if it is at the level of the superior articular head, the nail is usually at the appropriate depth. The outlet view is used to visualize the placement of the first greater tuberosity drill and screw guide. In this case, the nail is rotated slightly internally to maximize purchase of the first screw and the greater tuberosity. This portion of the video shows two drill sleeves in place, the first in the fourth screw hole and the second in the first screw hole in the proximal jig. The fourth screw hole sleeve gives the surgeon a rough idea of the anatomic rotation of the nail. If the fourth screw hole sleeve appears to be aligned at about 30 to 40 degrees of retroversion in relation to the forearm, the nail rotation is correct, simulating the anatomic version of approximately 30 to 40 degrees of retroversion of the humeral head. The lower drill guide visualized is for the first greater tuberosity screw. The first greater tuberosity is drilled for and measured, and the screw placed. In this case, I decided to place a long screw that was abutting the undersurface of the subchondral bone of the anterior superior humeral head, as the bone quality was good, and I wanted to maximize support of the initially inferiorly displaced humeral head. At this point, the second greater tuberosity screw sleeve is placed percutaneously directly to the bone first making a small skin incision, and then spreading the deltoid directly. The screw is drilled for, measured, and placed. Note that the assistant is holding the jig stable, and that the drill sleeve has a posterior to anterior orientation. Screw advancement becomes more difficult as the screw compresses the tuberosity against the nail and humeral head. Only two finger tightness is required. Vigorous over-tightening will cause perforation of the screw head through the tuberosity cortex and potential loss of fixation. The AP X-ray shows compression of the tuberosity to the head. The compression occurs because of the screw purchase into the polyethylene sleeve of the nail, 
which not only locks the screw to the nail, but also pulls the screw inward during rotation, compressing the screw head against the greater tuberosity. The distal screw is placed via a targeting jig. The sleeve is placed via the jig against the bone through a percutaneous incision. This screw should be oriented in lateral to medial fashion, as viewed by the AP radiograph. In this case, I elected to place only one dynamic screw to allow immediate controlled impaction of the fracture site. The final intraoperative radiographs are shown here. Because the nail was internally rotated somewhat, the position of the anteroposterior screw was not ideal for placement into the lesser tuberosity. However, because the rotator cuff was intact and was not disrupted during fixation, the lesser tuberosity was noted to be near anatomically reduced and stable underneath the humeral head. A tension band suture can also be placed from the subscapularis to one of the greater tuberosity screws in cases such as this as well. The deltoid and coracle acromial ligament are sutured back to the acromion using transosseous absorbable or non-absorbable sutures according to the surgeon's discretion. The final intraoperative range of motion can be assessed before or after closure while the C-arm is present if desired. In this case, the intraoperative range of motion was near full with some limitation of elevation secondary to the drapes. This range of motion assessment can guide limits for passive range of motion exercises, which are usually started immediately postoperatively. Recovery room, AP, and axillary radiographs reveal near anatomic reduction of the fracture of the humeral head, lesser and greater tuberosities. So let's review again the preoperative films to remind us of the initial fracture. The one week post op radiographs reveal anatomic placement of the tuberosities and humeral head with satisfactory position of the hardware. Upon closer inspection of the one-week post-op radiograph, early dynamic impaction of the surgical neck fracture site is observed. This has been noted by recent literature and many experts in the treatment of proximal humeral fractures to be an important factor in gaining expeditious healing at the surgical neck fracture site. This is a clear advantage of intramedullary fixation over other types of fixation in the treatment of these fractures. These six-week postoperative radiographs show the surgical neck portion of the fracture between the shaft, humeral head, and greater tuberosity to be healed with evident corticocancellous remodeling. The greater and lesser tuberosities are noted to be healed in near anatomic position on these views. At six months postoperative, there is no evident complication, arthritis, collapse, hardware protrusion, or avascular necrosis. As noted during the technique video, there is minimal to no exposure of the fracture at the surgical neck. In our experience, this lack of damage to the blood supply of the fracture site and humeral head has likely helped lead to the favorable results that we have observed with intramedullary nail treatment of these fractures. Here's the patient's follow-up. His incisions are well healed and his motion is near full in all planes. Let's listen to the patient's account of his own recovery. So, Jim, I uh, just ask you a few questions. How do you uh, feel after the surgery? Oh, it's feeling fantastic. I, they said it, a couple of months into the surgery, you feel like your arm's never going to move again, and now I'm really finding out it's normal. Describe what you're doing with your shoulder now. How does it feel? What kind of activities are you doing? Um, pretty much everyday activity I can do. Anything I'm required to do during the day, I can do. Uh, really extreme motion, I couldn't shoot a basketball yet, but that's coming. Mm -hmm. um, but it, nothing really hurts unless it really takes it to an extreme. An extreme stretch hurts right now, but everything else day to day is not a problem. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Left-handed. Left-handed, right. So that's why the shooting the basketball is a little more Yeah, it's impossible. Different. So uh, let's see you uh, lift your arms up for me, uh, Jim. Let me go over to here. Yeah. Now stretch it all the way up. Okay, now bring it on down. Okay, does that feel comfortable? Yes. Yeah. Now put your elbows at your side like we've done before. I'm just going to come up like this to show your rotation. Keep your elbows at your side. Rotate them out to the side as much as you can now. Does that feel comfortable? Yes. Right okay. Fine. Bring it back. Okay. Now, bring your arms to the side and up. I know you're going to hit that wall, but go inside and up as far as you can. Okay. All right. Now, put your hands behind your head. Elbows backwards. Now, hand on top of your head. 
elbows backwards. Can you comb your hair with your oh, yeah. hand now? No problem? No problem. Okay, can you face the wall now and show us how far you can reach up behind your back? Well, we're about, if I measure by the belt, I'm just over the belt now. Okay. So. And then what about the other hand? How far does that one go? You go? So you got a little work to do on that, but yeah. it's coming along. But as far as overall, your uh, what do you feel about the result of surgery? Oh, fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And you remember what your fracture looked like in the beginning. Oh, when I saw that, I figured I'd never use Without a fake shoulder, I'd never use my arm again. Oh, great. You want to flap your arms up and down again just to kind of show? Go up and down really fast now. Does that hurt at all? Uh, just at the extremes. When I get okay. to the very top, there's pain, but not much. Okay, come this way just a little bit, mm -hmm. and then turn face that way. Now lift forward as far as you can. Now yeah, do it a couple times, yeah. Any problem there? No. Okay, great. The Tournier Aquilus Proximal Humeral Nail is specifically designed for minimally invasive reduction and stable fixation of displaced proximal humerus fractures. Its anatomic alignment, proximal locked anatomic tuberosity screws, and distal dynamic fixation provide a unique combination of limited exposure, anatomic compressive fixation of the tuberosities, and dynamic impaction of the surgical neck fracture. Please feel free to visit the website www.tournier.com to learn more.